Wine's made all over the world. Uh, we're back for another week on the Blind Wine Channel, this time with six wines, all made from one country, and we've got to pick which country they're coming from. We've got the Olympics on at the moment, so I feel like I'm pretty in tune with different countries around the world and what their sort of athletes bring to different codes of sport. Uh, you can use the code down in the description, get 10% any, off any of these wines, uh, and uh, hopefully we like them, so you'll want to drink them as well. <laughs> All right, guessing the country. I haven't got a terribly good track record for this, so I'm gonna give it my best red hot crack. Oh, yummy. Like loving this like, yeah, honeycomby, like almond meal, hazelnut thing going on here. Pretty ripe, oaky, but this is, oh, there's a nice bit of freshness underneath. I reckon this is Shannon. Racy acid, really tight acid, uh, really salty, and then bugger all on the palate, uh, on the like palate length that really nicks off after you try it. Um, Yummy, yummy wine. You'll think it's Pinot Gris. I'd drop $25 a bottle for that and I would buy 12. I've got plenty, plenty of great reasons to keep a wine like that around the place. Oh, fuck yeah, yum. Great acid, love that complexity um, of that, you know, honeycomb, nutty spice that kind of exists over the wine, but there's this nice, leasy, savory, bready thing that kind of runs through it, but brilliant acidity mixed with. I would pay, I don't know, 38 for that, put it in the magic slot. I only need one of those, I'm not gonna lie. Not my favorite wine, but I'm sure Brendan and Noel will find something in it that's intrinsically enjoyable. Great acid, love that kind of like crystally texture to it as well. Uh, you know, y'all know how I love Shannon. I'm getting the does. I'm happy to pay $55 for this. You beauty, what an absolute rip snorter. Golden color. Mmm, that beautiful smelling wine. Very like pineapple-y, um, passion fruity, papaya, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, definitely golder. Lovely, luscious, broad. Um, it's a very beautiful, very pretty uh, style of wine. All that commentary around the aromats and the nose that I thought was a little bit ill. Don't worry about it, pal away, brilliant, and it doesn't really flow through. Um, it's very clean. It's got this sort of uh, mealy, like whole, whole mealy, but like almond meal or something like that that's running through it. Yep, it's got that peppery, bouncy acidity that reminds me of Sauvignon Blanc. That being said, I really like this. I really, really like this. I like that. That tropicalness is really not like overt. The ripeness is really good. It's not green. That's that's a really well crafted, really well made. And again, my head's already in France. So maybe, maybe that early call means something. With this kind of good fun savoriness to it as well. This is really good fun. Into it. Really, really, really good. Wine number three. Same hue, a little bit more golden. All of these white wines all have this amazing core of fruit and there's something savory. There's something just sticking to the side of it that's actually altering how it's smelling to me. A Little bit reductive on the nose, little hint of maybe someone's had beans the night before that you're hanging out with there. Um... Yeah, that's like, that's the good thing about Chardonnay. It really mops up winemaking really, really well. Like it really mops up a lot of all the things that it's thrown at. Not, none of these whites are what I would describe as being high acid. Quite textual, very pretty. So we could be in Italy as well. Could be in South Africa. Uh, is probably another big uh, solid shout here. That's nice. It's quite nice. It's got this sweet fruit thing at first, sort of like a sultanery, like dried out grape sort of flavor. Oh uh, yeah. It's got this kind of like Chablis-esque style savoriness to it. It doesn't have the acidity of something like Shannon. It's a little bit broader. I think that's awesome. 12 bottles. I'm gonna pay 70 bucks for it. I'll pay the Chardonnay tax. You know where a lot of these textural whites that are well made that don't stray from savoriness have a little bit lower amount of acidity. We'll see. Let's jump into the reds. I think I'm I think I'm leaning old world with these. Like the reds might be a little bit more helpful. I struggle to pick characteristics out in white wine quite often so <laughs> Wine number four, a little bit darker, a little bit denser. Oh, again, very pretty, very pretty. Very well put together. What are you? Where are you from? It's not saying anything. This isn't as helpful as you'd think. You're really grasping at straws when you're just asking wines where they're from. That's a nice little spicy blend. I really like that. Um, definitely rustic, definitely like winter wines, definitely food friendly. It's got a pepperiness and a structure that's really cool. The tannins are nice and dense. Powerful, full tannin, ripe. This thing is ripe. That's interesting. Like I would almost just straight off, um, you know, the bat trying to look at this wine objectively. It feels new world. Really dark in color. 
Yep, that tastes like red wine. Um, tastes like heavier style red. Uh, nothing really standing out on the palate. The nose is my favorite thing about this wine. It's right red flowers is what I'm getting from this, like walking through a springtime garden. It's definitely like, I'd love some like, you know, richer, like long cooked, like stew style foods, like something with like lots of like, you know, maybe like a lamb or beef or even sausages or something like that, something spicy, like even cassoulet would go like hard with this. Like this is good, this is good, good, good. I'm not sort of like rustic is a bad word. It doesn't really mean much, but it's like sandy, you know, like they're, they're, they're quite harsh. Um, and I think it's going to need a little bit of time in cellar to be able to just flesh out a bit. Wine number five, very similar, but it's brown. Got that, got a bit of a brown highlight. A little bit bretty, but it's 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 a lovely way to shroud the wine. You know, you've, if you've been watching the channel for a little while, you know we're kind of known for slamming wines for having brett. Sometimes it can certainly overstretch the mark. This here, I think, is almost like perfectly in poise. I wouldn't want it any more than this. It's pretty... This is a pretty big wine. Um, it's definitely giving some more like Shirazi sort of territory energy. Yeah, more fruit weight. Even the color on it, like just a little bit darker around the edges than the previous wine. Very disjointed. Very like, mm, just not that into it, honestly. Not that into it. it. Just doesn't feel cohesive. It doesn't feel built up and structured and like all, everything's kind of come together and made this like brilliant wine. Again, rich, dense, powerful, broad. Lower acidity. So again, it's got me vexed for country, but I um, it feels new worldy with the caveat of Brett. So, you know, pushes me and pulls me in different directions. I'll say it's going to be $40 a bottle and I'll have three of those as well. None of these have been wine of my life. Very rarely encounter pinotages that I enjoy. This for you is just disjointed like pinotage does. Uh, I will be getting one bottle for study purposes only and I'll be happy to pay $30. $30. Um, I just don't like this style of wine. I just, it just doesn't feel cohesive. It just feels weird and disjointed. I'm not, I'm not into it. <laughs> And last wine, again, yeah, another dark, dense red. No, dark, dense reds. Another tannic, medium to heavy, medium plus is what we like to say in the industry. If you're ever in a wine tasting, just, you can say everything is medium plus. But again, lovely, pretty and structured and lively, but it's more cohesive than the last wine. Like all these red, the three red wines really seem very, very similar. This one feels the most kind of like lifted and bright. Bad at me. Lovely wine, fantastic wine. This is probably my wine of lineup for sure. It's not the wine that I bought the most of. The wine I bought the most of is number one, but this for me is my, my best quality. I only need six of them because it's quite a big wine. Yeah, not the most exciting thing in the world. Again, heavier styles of reds. So maybe it's coming from somewhere with a slightly heavy rainfall. I don't know. I'm, you know what? I'm sticking with Argentina. I'm going South American. Rustic and heavy, whereas this one just feels weird and kind of in, in the middle. And I like that pepperiness to it that's going on. I'm going just like straight Cab Franc here, um, which I quite like. Uh, I'm going at six and I'll pay 50 bucks. Australian, New Zealand, Kiwi, not with these wines. <laughs> I'm gonna go with Argentina. I'm just gonna lock it in, you know, fuck it. Yeah. So the Olympics are on. We're watching a lot of different countries doing their thing at the moment. Now we get to watch another country do their thing in the form of these six wines. How did you go? What do you reckon? Yeah, I had a good time. I had a good time. I, I, I bought a bit of one. I didn't go crazy. I really struggled with the origin. There, and there are like so many different reasons why I chose different countries. I couldn't pin it down. It was not all for me or like things pointing towards one nah. place. Yep. There was point. In fact, there is one pointing to one place, but I refuse to choose it, which is Australia. I, these can't possibly be. Australia. It's a funny move. But they Australia. are Australian. Uh, I just got to this one and thought it kind of tasted a little bit like Malbec. And I was just like, I've heard that Brendan said that Argentina makes Malbec these days. So it, does. Like it does. It does. It does. Has uh, been for a long like, time. I'm not going to lie. I had no idea what these were. I haven't drunk a lot of white wine from Argentina. So it actually fit perfectly with my theory. All right. So I ended up on Argentina. Uh, I, I was on France most of the way, to be honest. As soon as I hit here, 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 I was like, yeah, could be, could be. Then these make no sense in a French context. They make no. sense in an Argentinian context, but these don't make a lot of sense in an Argentinian context either because no. there's no Torontes here. Yeah, there's and then no, like, you smell Torontes from the next week. 100%, like, honestly. 100%. Yeah. And so I, I like, Low acid whites, high tannin primary fruited reds with like a little bit of brett going on. I, you've just explained what country it was. Low acid, well, I don't think it's Italy. I think they're too primary for Italy. 
Spain, uh, just two primary for Spain, plus the, the reds, uh, whites have no acid. Uh, they, it's not Germany. The first wine has acid. I personally think it's a lineup of South African wines. I, I jumped to South Africa as well. And I thought South Africa is the only France that could out France France. Yeah, I was like, like I have no idea. I hope it's something fun. Wine but, number one. Yeah! My yeah. Line, my, yeah! It was between either that wine or this wine for my wine alone. The best. Shannon. Loved it. Shannon, Big baby, fan. let's go! It smells like the Big central fan. markets. I love the central market. I love the central markets <laughs> too, but I was confused. Uh, I thought it was a bit odd and salty was my takeaway mm. from this one. Right? Yeah, mm. salty, high acid, textural, custard apple like, oh, it's awesome. I fucking love it. Love it. Nutty, hey, oh, so good. Yeah, this is the sort of wine that you like. It's not particularly the sort of wine that I love. Uh, I had one for 38. Um, but also, as I was drinking, I was like, I don't like this. You know who's going to fucking love this? The other two. Because I just, yeah. it's, it's over my head, man. But... Pretty cool. High acid, nutty, textural, delicious. Yeah. I went with like Pinot Gris for this. Like, I was not like, it's the most complex Pinot Gris I've ever had. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah. Uh, 12 for 55 for me. Yeah, one for uh, 38. 12 for 25. That's it. Shannon from South Africa. Dude, oh, nicely oh. done. It's well good done, dude. Let's go. Naturally fermented, matured in old French oak and concrete egg. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, very, very good. Stellenbosch. Well the done, best. The best. well done. All right, all right. Noah, so on know, point today. Let's now go. that we know it's South African, does that give you any more context for the rest of these wines? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, sort of. Yeah, sort of. Yeah, sort of. I mean, the, I, I, I didn't like a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wasn't like stoked about, like, I was a couple I loved, but then a couple I was like, eh, yeah, enough for me. Yeah, I mean, look, they, they, they had this sort of like primary fruit thing and then a savory element that kind of, for me, sat off to the side and each one was a different, like a different type of savory element. And I, I don't know, the, it, it didn't strike me as being stellar and out of this world. Um, that's just me. Um, half a dozen for 40 bucks. I reckon this would develop really nice. I reckon this is a SAP, SSB kind of SAP blend kind of thing. I think it's pretty fun. Uh, three for 30. Three for 30. Cool. All right, so we're all sitting around that sort of mark. How much was it? Oh. Old Vines like, like, White. Yeah. Old yeah, so definitely one of the the most like lauded producers out of uh, South Africa from Swartland in particular, mm -hmm. uh, like doing some absolutely incredible things. And I've had some of um, their wines earlier, like last month in the states, and looked oh, cool. stunning. Absolutely love them. Uh, head over heels in love with them. Um, just as it looks in the glass today, not as much. It doesn't say variety. I'm gonna have to look up. Um, it's just a blend of a bunch of different things. I think so, yeah. yeah. I wish I knew exactly the variety, but yeah, or whatever. Um, one number three. I was really into this. I, I thought this was great Chardonnay. I yeah. think it's very, very good. I thought this was going to be the ex most expensive one that we tasted in this little lineup today. I thought it was... These could sneak up on you on price-wise, but I think this one, you know, has that kind of thing that we really like is, you know, expensive white wine. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. exactly. It's definitely on that kind of like savory end of Chardonnay rather than like the kind of, you know, high acid oaky influence. It's a bit more of that kind of like lazy, like long-term old oak age, um, which I really like. It's so smooth as well. Mm -hmm. Lower good acid. texture. Yeah, yeah, great yeah. texture, lower acid the first one. But I think yeah. I have quite good texture in wine, so like this is probably gonna be expensive because as soon as I see that thing being like well integrated, I'm like, ah oh, yeah, money, I mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. um, I had it 57 bucks, uh, which is a novel <laughs> amount of money and it's expensive. Uh, and I wanted six of them. Uh, I had 35 and between three and six. Uh, I was at 12 for 70. 12 for 70. How much does it look? Chardonnay. And I really like, quite like that. Great packaging too. Great packaging. And off all these wines are actually pretty good packaging. Yeah, they're really uh, definitely leveling the, up in the, the next one. The are like darting to soar for these mm. wines. I can understand why, probably in a domestic context, that people are drinking them more and then exporting them overseas. And people want to have like benchmark South African wines because they're a very important wine producing country. But then mm. you get to Australia and it's like, whoa, okay, slow down. So, oh, hold your horses. Like these mm. aren't that good, you know? Mm. Like, you know, maybe the Shannon's definitely context. worth the money. Um, but yeah. in context, in market, like, you know, pay like, you know, 85 bucks for that and you put it against an Australian Chardonnay, you're like, Ugh. That's, that's yeah. priced up against that Chardonnay by far. Yeah, exactly. It's like, mm. you could spend another $15 and get a by far Chardonnay and it'll be like, yeah, I'll but take I a mean, by far. But I mean, to be fair, like if we were to flip this around and we're in France right now and like, you know, yeah. you're, you're being served up some like Napa Valley, you know, Chardonnay, you know, some sort of central coast thing. Yeah. You know, and you're going, yeah, but our burgundies are like this. Yeah, Whereas, yeah. it's like, I'm, I'm drinking like- Of course Lafayette, the Australian yeah. wines are gonna be obviously more value than what we're getting imported. Anyways, uh, onto the reds. Onto the reds indeed. Mm. This is where I started going down my South American little 
tangent with this one. I was pretty into it. Uh, all of these were just sort of like, as you were saying, like bigger, more tannic, more mm. primary fruit. Yeah, but if this is a good like Cab Merlot blend or like some Bordeaux inspired blend, but I, I actually really quite liked this. I wouldn't drink it heaps because it's not my style, but I think it's a pretty ripper wine. Mm. Mm. Um, but yeah, not bad. Yeah, cool and spicy. Uh, $36, I wanted three bottles of it. Uh, six bottles for 50. Three for 45. <laughs> It's really funny, like 10 years ago, people were like, take 30 away. Mm -hmm. Cabernet Franc. That is a That's quite an extracted Franc? Cabernet Franc. Jeez. <laughs> Jeez. I, I picked Cap Franc for another one, but not this one. This is a, like a, a very textural, like not particularly peppery Cap Franc. I'd pick Cap Franc for the second one. That's next red. And you'd pick Cap Franc for the third one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Cap Franc across the way. This is my least favorite wine comfortably. I really did not like this at really? all. Really? It's no. pretty tired along in the tooth. Uh, Brett's pretty overpowering. It sounds like it smells, like, it smells like Pinot look, Tage to me. I said 40 bucks for three, but let's just say, for argument's sake, it's probably 85. Yeah. <laughs> One for 30, 200 bucks right up there. Yeah. One for 32. <laughs> yeah, I had, um, I also had three for 40, but knowing what we know now, it's going to be, yeah, 70. Yeah, Shiraz. That could be Shiraz. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's right. got that sour thing. It's just it's, dis that, it's, it's disjointed. Brett, it's just shit. Yeah, it's, it's just disjointed. There's no cohesion. It's a bit weird. It, it's 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 probably Pinot Dutch. It's a sin. Yeah, it's oh, a great. sin. Yeah. One of what is it? Produced, pronounced, sign, yeah. sign. Uh, wine of Malgas. Red. Red. Twenty eighteen. Red. Do you reckon that's a nice way of saying probably Pinotage? Yeah, probably. <laughs> I love the brand. Honestly, the branding yeah. and packaging on all of these we, wines and is we, the best yeah, I've seen. We also had a sin Shannon on the show where we all really liked it. Um, but you know, we're just not into South African Reds as a as a group. It seems. Wine and number six. Finishing off. My, my wine lineup. This is my favorite red. This is my favorite. Definitely red for my sure. favorite red of the three. I just thought it was some heavy red blend thing. I, couldn't put my finger on what it was, but probably is. Yeah, <laughs> and I had it for thirty-six, so it's probably sixty-six. <laughs> uh, six for fifty must be ninety bucks. Mm. All right, I had six for forty-five. It must be seventy-five. <laughs> yeah. uh, how much was it like? Oh, oh, savage. Ah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, 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 we've been savage. <laughs> savage. Yeah, all this. Uh, Syrah. Uh, I think we might have had this. We have uh, it looks uh, before, and it, and it rated pretty. It might have even been one of the week back in the day, like OOG. Yeah, um, must have back been in the day. Savage. Um, awesome. Now, what's our favourite South African? Well, I mean, were there any that really stood? Uh, the first one you guys both really liked. I love the Shannon. Fuck yeah, the I'm all about Shannon. How much was the? Um, Old Vine's white wine, Lucky? Oh, I'm just because most of them are 70. Most, most of them are 70. 70. <laughs> 70, there we go. Cool, yeah, so wine number one. Wine number one, yes. <laughs> Big yeah. value wine for money one. for wine number one. Yeah. Chenin Blanc, and well done, Noah. Well Tasting picked. on point today.